Singapore is pumping $37 billion into its next five-year plan for research, innovation and enterprise. It's about 1% of the country's GDP and $9 billion more than the previous budget. It aims to support key economic and national priorities in four areas, manufacturing, health, digital economy and sustainability, on top of leveraging AI and enhancing the talent pool. We are doing what we need to do in order to help the industry here grow and prosper. doesn't mean every project will come here because there will be some projects where the, uh, the US, for example, or maybe the Europeans or maybe the Chinese will say this one I absolutely want and um, whether through subsidies, whether through incentives, whether through directives, I will cause it to come to them. And we can't compete against that kind of projects. But there will be other parts of the uh, industry which will not be like that, and I, they are substantial, and I think in all those areas we will be competitive. And to that end, Singapore will launch two large national programs to address major challenges in the semiconductor and biomedical space. Two other initiatives are still being developed and will be announced at a later date. Kate Lin Ng with this report. In the semiconductor lab, researchers are finding new ways to make electronics work faster. They're testing new materials and designs that move data through fiber optics with less power and better performance. These breakthroughs then support commercial players like Advanced Micro Foundry to roll out mature, production-ready processes. It's very equipped with the, uh, the industrial grey, almost like the, the fab that we have. Even some of the, the two are much more advanced. So which means the technology developed here is ready to be used for uh, industry people like me. Projects like these will continue to get support under RIE 2030. This includes the first RIE flagship set to build Singapore's role in the global semiconductor supply chain. We want to anchor high value at R&D and manufacturing right here. And we want to create new pathways uh, to grow startups and establish our globally competitive local enterprises. We want to be more market responsive in our R&D and we are going to achieve that with this semiconductor flagship. Another priority is keeping Singaporeans healthier for longer by advancing biomedical tech. At this hub, the world's first gastric cancer blood test was developed just one of several successes bringing research to real-world use. With the upcoming tranche of support, more work can continue in areas like brain health and physical function as the population ages. We will think about integrating technology across multiple discipline homes to be able to bring forth uh, commercializable and investable opportunities. It needs to be in an area that is meaningful and will have an impact both uh, in the clinic or in terms of uh, the generation of economic opportunities for our country. Results from the past two decades of investments into RIE are showing, with places like these turning research and technology into real-world products. Now, the question of unmet needs will be a key priority, with current standards of care and how disease is being treated driving ongoing research. It is the hope that places like these will continue to leverage on local insights to drive a global impact. And for deeper insights into the next five-year blueprint for research, innovation and enterprise for Singapore, we speak to John Lim, who is CEO of the National Research Foundation. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, we're hearing of a big range of new programs and investment under RIE 2030, but why are all of them so needed at this point? Well, I think we start with the notion that RIE 2030 is actually about investing in Singapore's future. Investing in research and innovation and enterprise is actually a long-term endeavour. And what does it give us? It gives us increased possibilities. It creates new economic potential that we can harness, uh, that we can uh, gain from um, as we look ahead. And it also allows us to have the capacity and the capability to address strategic national challenges such as ageing. And in particular, not just ageing, but successful ageing. And these things are actually the whole reason why we invest uh, and have invested long-term on a sustained basis. We put about 1% of GDP into research, innovation and enterprise, and we've done so for many years 
across multiple tranches. And what this translates into uh, is $28 billion for the current five-year tranche and a 32% increase as we look to RIE 2030 with a $37 billion uh, budget over five years. And as we look at it and we ask ourselves, is this large? Is this small? Well, it's not trivial, for sure. But if you actually compare our budgets with other countries and even some single large companies, you'd find that it's not large either. Mm -hmm. And so the question for us is, how can we identify the focus areas that are of significance to Singapore that will create impact for us? And how do we get there? And one of the, the traits that we must seek to retain is that we must be open to ideas and people and exchanges mm -hmm. of knowledge in order for us to be able to join hands with like-minded parties, top research institutions and top researchers around the world so that we can actually explore frontiers together and kind of reap the fruits of our collective effort. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be a, a feature in RIE 2030 as well. We don't have a monopoly on uh, problems to solve or challenges that we face. And we certainly don't have a monopoly on solutions and discoveries. And ultimately, it's about what will serve us well in expanding the scope mm. of possibilities for Singapore. We're going to go into more detail on that in just a bit. But before that, uh, John, we're going to look at also this idea of talent being a key strategy. So we're going to look at a report by Caitlin again. And she tells us of a new funding scheme to develop and attract promising young research and entrepreneurial talent. That includes a postdoctoral award that gives salary and research support, while international postgraduate scholarships provide broader exposure with overseas attachments. Take a look. Earlier at the media conference where the RIE 2030 was announced, Chairman for the National Research Foundation, Mr. Heng Sui Kiet, said that talent is the most critical success factor. Besides nurturing young local researchers, Singapore is also looking to attract the best minds from overseas. While continuing to develop our talent base, we will diversify our talent mix. Beyond scientists focusing on basic research, we include science innovators, entrepreneurs and more. This includes collaborating with research institutions and industries here and abroad to advance science and its applications. For one, NRF is partnering the European Union's flagship program for research and innovation to fund eligible Singapore-based researchers. Still, Senior Minister Lee Sien Long says it's not just about attracting talent from around the world. Beyond the research to the innovation to the um, entrepreneur to the startup and, 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 and commercialization phase, that ecosystem must be there and we must be able to provide that. The government support must be there. Mr. Lee adds that determining this talent also includes whether they can contribute to Singapore or do further good work in the future. Now, so John, as we've heard from the report as well, part of that strategy includes attracting talent from around the world with grants and also scholarships. But how do we balance that with also nurturing homegrown talent here in Singapore? Well, let's start with the core ingredient. We need talent. Talent is crucial to our success. The question is, what kind of talent and where will we get the talent from? You know, we are looking to both nurture homegrown talent as well as attract overseas top talent to collaborate with us, maybe spend some time in Singapore with us. Some might choose to move here, at, you know, either in the short term or, or longer term. And we must remain open. But why? It's not just a question of numbers. It's also because when you put top minds together, the prospects for discovering something interesting actually increase. You want that collision of constructive possibilities and that happens when you actually bring top minds together. So we want to send our homegrown talent out to be part of the global arena. We want uh, global talent to spend time with us in Singapore. And when we start with that, then we say, OK, what kind of schemes do we need? And we have schemes at all levels. We need top talent who are established in their fields and we need to, to kind of attract some of them to spend time here so that they can help to contribute to boosting the levels, the, the water level, raising the water level in our own ecosystem. You need postdocs, you need PhDs, you need a whole slew of things. And increasingly for RI in 2030, we're also going to focus on entrepreneurial talent. And this uh, is not just academic scientists, but it's also the entrepreneurs who have been um, kind of gone through the fires themselves, come out and 
are coming back into the system and saying, I will help others to grow their ventures. We also need the mentors, we need the advisors, we need the venture builders. And the whole slew of these uh, talent pools is what we need to try to encourage. So I would say that in this respect, directionally, we've made pretty good pro progress in RIE 2025, but in RIE 2030, we'll be looking what other schemes we can put in place in order to encourage the growth of the different kinds of talent that we need. Yeah, we're going to pick up on growth in just a bit. But, you know, talent aside, NRF is also focusing on fields like sustainability and quantum technologies with an emphasis on commercialization. Now, in the environmental space, funding will be channeled to areas like climate adaptation, in particular, weather science and heat resilience. Now, these include new scientific-based engineering models to better forecast how currents affect Singapore's environment. Accurate predictions and assessment is essential for long-term planning. Over time, we also hope to be able to create new solutions that incorporate uh, nature-based elements that can add to Singapore's capability towards coastal adaptation in the future. And as technologies advance, RIE 2030 aims to keep Singapore's digital economy safe and competitive. Programs will harness emerging tech like quantum to secure sensitive data, keep the digital space safe, and create new economic opportunities. So it's important that Singapore, as a, as a leading hub, uh, will be able to apply the, the power of quantum computing to transform the industries that we have in Singapore, and at the same time uh, build a very strong scientific base so they can position us for the next bound in quantum. Now, John, we've heard the climate research and quantum technologies are important points of focus. What other areas uh, is NRF prioritising when it comes to growth for Singapore? Well, it's not just an NRF list of priorities. It's actually a whole of government list of priorities because we need to consider what our nation needs. And actually, the list is quite long and across quite a wide range. So it includes uh, semiconductors, of course, um, advanced manufacturing, aviation, maritime, biomedical, uh, precision health, uh, you know, science of learning. You talk about AI, quantum, digital trust. You talk about coastal protection, which we just saw, climate adaptation, water, energy. The common strand, actually, is that these must help to increase economic growth potential or help us address some sort of national strategic priority. I think that remains the constant through it all. But I should say, though, that we will also make sure that we have a pool of funding that's always available for bottom-up investigator-led mm -hmm. ideas because the foundational research and keeping that at the, the cutting edge is actually critical for research excellence and, uh, and, and, and a key contributor to our continued success. Yeah, and speaking of what is critical, before we go, John, can you tell us what you would think is the key takeaway or perhaps the biggest impact that you think RIE 2030 is going to make? Well... You know, I think Singapore is a pretty good place to do research in. Uh, when you look at our rankings, um, our universities are rated well, um, our academic medical centres are rated well. We have quite a number of scientists who are highly cited. So on the research front, we'll continue to push forward. Um, but we've actually made pretty good progress and it's been an attractor for top talent to work with us. I think for RIE 2030, we want to increase the emphasis on impact and value creation. Here is where the grand challenge, uh, the, the first RIE flagship comes in on semiconductors and the first RIE grand challenge on longevity actually comes in. Um, but when we look at all of this, we say, okay, the focus on impact is actually what will galvanize, we hope, uh, people to, to seize the, the opportunity to take research and ideas into inventions, innovations and impact. And the third thing that we really want to do is to strengthen our talent pool. So we talked about this earlier, where it's not just nurturing homegrown talent, but also combining that with um, the collaborations and the possibilities of when we kind of work with others who are top of their fields. And we think that this whole combination actually will be a pretty potent mix, we think, mm -hmm. um, for creating greater value and impact and growth potential for mm -hmm. Singapore. Well, John, thank you so much for breaking all of that down for us when it comes to RIE 2030. I've been chatting with John Lim, who is CEO of the National Research Foundation.